presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adaiyatano program. Harley Davidson of Guam. Visit our new showroom now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam. I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dedido. Always open, always local. Ahead on Primetime, the very latest on YouTube. Plus, several public schools are open for those seeking shelter from YouTube. And four are arrested after 95 grams of ice is seized. Half day and good evening. It's a major storm that has many doing much of the same preparations we were seeing just last month. For more on Super Typhoon U2, we check in at the National Weather Service. Holiday, Carmen Victoria Trulahi here with our friend Chip Gard, a meteorologist from NWS with the latest on what is now Super Typhoon U2. Now he's been giving us uh, basically hourly updates on uh, what's going on with this storm. So what is the uh, latest for Guam, Chip? Well, the latest is it's uh, located about 13.9 north and 147.1 uh, east. And that's about 160 miles uh, east of Guam and about 125 miles southeast of uh, Saipan and Tinian. Uh, current intensity is very strong. It's about 180 miles an hour, and uh, it's uh, pretty close to peaking. In other words, uh, it's pretty close to getting its maximum intensity, but it's on a beeline headed right for uh, Saipan and, Ten and Tinian. So uh, it's moving uh, toward the west-northwest at about uh, 12 miles per hour. Right. So what type of winds um, can we expect in the next few hours when it comes to Guam? Well, right now in the coastal areas, we're probably getting pretty close to uh, damaging winds. That's tropical storm force winds, 39 mile per hour winds. Uh, they'll gradually pick up here and uh, uh, closest point of approach will be around midnight. And we could expect some uh, destructive winds around there, around 50 or 60 miles an hour. We don't expect any typhoon force winds for Guam. Mm -hmm. As far as road is concerned, They'll be on the edge of the typhoon force winds. We're looking at 75 to 85 mile per hour winds there. Uh, but for Saipan and Tinian, we're looking for winds in excess of 160 miles per hour. So uh, uh, winds are going to be extremely strong up there in the, the northern Marianas. Right. And for our viewers, we do have viewers who are uh, joining this live from the CNMI and from Tinian and also Rhoda. And so what would you tell them as far as preparation is concerned? I know they've been preparing in these uh, past few days leading up to the storm. Uh, but what can you tell us now? Uh, what should they be looking and expecting and what should they be doing at this moment? Well, people in Saipan and Tinian should be in a concrete structure. Uh, I don't think wooden structures are going to hold up very well to these kind of winds. And old, old metal structures probably not, won't hold up either. So uh, get in a concrete structure away from the coastal areas. In other words, uh, we could get a storm surge of uh, 15 uh, feet. Uh, so you could get uh, inundation over there uh, 10 to 15 feet above uh, ground level. So uh, get away from the coast, get in a concrete structure, hunker down. And the worst conditions are going to be uh, around midnight to uh, early morning hours, uh, you know, to maybe daybreak. Mm -hmm. And then things will slowly start to diminish. And, uh, and sometime late Thursday or early Friday, we will uh, be out of this mess. But uh, this is a strong storm, a very strong storm. Uh, uh, October and November are the months where we can get the strongest storms and the largest storms. Sure. And th this is a monster, you know. It's not the biggest storms we've seen but certainly a lot bigger than Sotolor was when it went across Saipan. Right. And that is, um, again, a little alarming, especially for our neighbors up north. And for Guam, we are in condition of readiness one um, as of 6 p.m. And so tell us what can we also tell our viewers back home who uh, hopefully are also in a concrete structure here on Guam? Well, uh, people on Guam should be uh, pretty good. Uh, people that live in uh, weak structures, you know, uh, uh, poorly constructed uh, homes should get into a shelter. Uh, but we're not going to see a lot of damage here on Guam. Uh, it's not going to be as strong as Moncut was, for example, on Guam. But uh, uh, get away from the coast. Stay out of the water. The rip currents are going to be deadly. 
it's really rough out there right now. I was just down at the uh, boat basin, mm -hmm. and it's very rough down there. The winds are about 30 miles per hour, and the uh, seas are very rough with uh, getting up six to nine feet. And I'm sure out on the horizon, they look like they're 14, 15 feet. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, again, you are advised by the Office of Homeland Security to stay indoors. We will continue to provide you updates. Stay tuned and logged into KUAM News. Back to you in studio. Classes were out for many students today. Several Guam DOE schools this afternoon opened up as emergency shelters. KUAM's Nick Delgado has more. The areas inside the emergency shelters have been marked and taped off. You know what, boy, I'm giving up. I just want one week supply and um, the food that was it. I'm, I'm tired of this guy, but yeah. it's, too, it's too hard, really. Faye Kang was one of the first to show up to the shelter at the Estumbo Elementary School in Dededo. Oh, the last time from we have is um, it's very scary. So we have transportation last, uh, last month, a couple of months ago when it happened. Now there's only one transportation and it's kind of far because I have my kids in the house. I have to get them out before um, you know, hit us. She lives in a Woodington home on Swamp Road with her family of seven, including three little ones. You know, it was safe last, last time because we're surrounded with trees. But now I don't know. It's scary down and yeah. It's scary down. Along with the Stumbo Elementary, Marie, Ujoa, Upi and Machinana Elementary schools are open up north. GW High for Central Residents and Down South shelters are set up at Harry S. Truman, Marito Elementary, and Talafofo Elementary. So we had to make certain that when, when we prepare for these families to come in, we got to make certain that the paperwork is in place. We have to make certain that the available space for them are also taken care of. It's just a matter of accountability also in knowing the number of families that are actually physically here versus the number that they put in their registration. And um, so it's just making sure that once one typhoon is over, we prepare for the next one, documents and everything are in place. Dr. Rebecca Pears is the principal at Agata Middle School, assisting with the shelter up north. It's it's quite uh, challenging, but we you know our our ta our task here is to make certain that the the community is safe. Those that are here being housed for shelter, that they are sh are safe altogether. Safe from the storm, the Estumbo shelter holds up to 350 people. Dr. Pears reminds residents that a list of rules is also posted for those waiting out the storm at all shelters. Here, the first thing that they need to do is make sure that they go into the main office and they make the, uh, they register the family we have to make sure that they understand they they put the head of household how many are coming in and they also have to understand that they can't cook their meals in here they can go home and prep their meals first and then come back with their prep meals um, and in worst case scenarios if they're here longer than they need to be then they can probably cook outside but not inside the classrooms or in the cafeteria anyone needing shelter from the storm is also urged to bring their own bedding water and food for Faye and other families in the shelter, it was about getting to safety before the storm made its closest approach. Bring my kids over here and, you know, protect them because I don't know what's going to happen. FEMA officials remain on standby. Many flew in from the mainland this week to join others who continue to work in the Marianas after Typhoon Mankut. Todd Hoos with FEMA External Affairs says about 100 federal employees are pre-stationed on Guam ready to help in case of an emergency is declared in the region post-Typhoon U2. Whenever there's a new storm, it resets the clock. There is a whole new group of funding. There are new team members that step in, and based on the damage that's involved, we identify what partners are going to be most effective. And so in the event there is another typhoon or a storm, uh, there are new people available. There will be new damage assessments. There will be new evaluations and see how we can help our people recover. Recovery efforts that continue even after Typhoon Mankut. Guam Homeland Security officials say no formal appeal for individual assistance was made by Governor Calvo, but they are still reassessing this request. President Trump has approved an emergency declaration for the CNMI in the wake of Typhoon U2. A news release from the White House says the president ordered federal assistance to supplement local response efforts. FEMA has been authorized to coordinate and provide help for required emergency measures. CNMI Governor Ralph Torres made the request through FEMA on Tuesday and thanked the president's president for his expeditious approval. The assistance covers Rota, Saipan, Tinian, and the Northern Mariana Islands. Benino Byrne Ruiz is named, was named as the federal coordinating officer. 
Four people are in jail and some 95 grams of crystal methamphetamine, also known as the drug ICE, was seized by police Wednesday. Acting on a tip, officers from the Mandania Drug Task Force arrested 48-year-old Patrick Santos Padua for possession with intent to distribute a controlled substance. The three others were charged with illegal possession of the drug. They are 18-year-old Javin J. Portisac, 20-year-old Ethan Keith Sahagin, and 32-year-old Geraldine Deanne Portisac, who was also charged with child abuse. All four are residents in Mong Mong and are confined at the Department of Corrections. The case has been forwarded to the AGs for prosecution. Nearly two years since the alleged incident involving former police Colonel Mark Charfras, and the case is now all set to go to trial. Charfras appeared in the Superior Court this week. He is facing misdemeanor charges for official misconduct and obstructing governmental functions, connected to a December 2016 incident in Agate. Then he was seen on police body camera footage yelling at junior officers who were responding to a report of fireworks at a home in that village. Parties are given until October 29th to submit their exhibits. The selection process for a jury of six will begin on November 5th. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. Stay tuned. You're watching KUAM. Cheers to 80 years! It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavos Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. non cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavos Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. This bill is very anti-quality of life because it does not consider the expense that the family will incur as a result of mandating treatment that most likely will not result in a quality of life outcome for the infant. Lulian Guerrero testified that the quality of life of a child that survives an abortion is not worth the medical treatment. What this bill does is it will burden the family with enormous medical bills. How does she see people? How does she see that society would be burdened? When is life itself considered a burden? I have a right to vote because I was allowed to live. We should not vote for a candidate that supports the destruction of human life. Vote for life. Vote for Tenorio Adam. I'm Ray Tenorio and I approve this message. I didn't plan to be a single mom, no one does. But here I am, mid-30s, divorced with three kids, just trying to make things work. With the rising cost of living on Guam, it gets harder for working families like mine to get by. I've heard some politicians say that the economy is good, but rent is higher, health insurance is too expensive, and our incomes have stayed the same. It's clear that the change they're talking about hasn't been for us, and we deserve better. I'm just so tired of all the empty promises. It's time to fight for a Guam that working families can afford. That's why I'm voting for Lou Leon Guerrero. Lou is a successful businesswoman who doesn't just talk about creating jobs. She doesn't just talk about housing. She's made it possible for people just like me to buy their first home. So when she says she's going to work to make Guam better, I believe her and I trust her. I'm voting for Lou and I ask all of you who are tired of the way things have been to vote for her too. I'm Lilian Guerrero and I approve this ad. These are our islands and this is our Laddie Stone. This is what we stand for and who we are. For more than 35 years, we delivered connections that matter throughout the Marianas. First via radio link, then by fiber optic cable. We launched the region's first 4G LTE network and continue to make our network faster and stronger. Telecommunications change the way our islands interact with the world, but not the heart behind those interactions. IT&E, explore your world. Hafade Guam, this is Telo Tidiwe, and I'm running to be your senator. We have an opportunity again to turn good ideas into public policy, prioritizing road repairs, raising the standard for a cleaner environment, and funding new village facilities and programs. As a small business owner and public servant, I bring the experience and leadership you are looking for. I'm Telo Tidigui. I approve this message and humbly ask for your vote. Sijus Masi, Maraming Salamat Po. Thank you, Guam. My opponents have attacked me lying about who I am or what I would do as your governor. So I thought you should hear from me. 
These attacks are flat out lies and meant to distract you from the fact that they have failed you all these years. I am the only person running for governor who is a mother, grandmother, and a nurse. The truth is, I believe that when making decisions about her reproductive health, a woman should be guided by her family, priest, or doctor, not the government. They also claim I have a conflict with Bank of Guam. The truth is, banking is a highly regulated industry and I will follow the law as I always have. Josh and I have plans to stabilize our economy and promote real growth to make healthcare more affordable, to provide resources to our police and fire departments, and to truly make education a priority. I am Lulian Guerrero and I approve this message because you deserve to hear the truth. Hafre and welcome back. In line with National Disability Employment Month, DISID hosted a conference at the Nico Hotel with the theme, America's Workforce Empowering All. The goal is to strengthen public and private partnerships to employ individuals with disabilities. Grace Donaldson, CEO and General Manager of Pacific Human Resources, says they work with GovGuam to help employers fill hiring gaps with opportunity for disabled individuals seeking employment. The purpose of this conference is really to help help employers understand and, and um, understands what their responsibilities are, but also to uh, help them understand or educate them on the benefits of hiring individuals with disabilities. You know, if we look at it from the perspective of what are they capable of rather than what is their disability, mm -hmm. it's a win-win for everyone. In conjunction with the conference, a job fair will be held Saturday at the Timuni Community Center from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. It's Red Ribbon Week promoting a drug-free Guam. This Saturday, October 27th, marks the second Take Back initiative this year where DEA agents will help dispose of medications to prevent misuse and abuse. Ed Talbot, resident agent in charge for the Drug Enforcement Administration, says fighting against the opioid epidemic is one of DEA's top priorities. Them to churn in their unwanted, uh, unused, or expired medications that they've been prescribed uh, and turn them into for, is for safe disposal. So they're, they're not out in the public, they're not in their homes, uh, they, they don't get flushed down the toilet, and they're not exposed to potential theft or actually uh, inadvertent taking by a child. You can dispose of your medications at the Navy, Air Force Base, Kmart, or Ganya Shopping Center on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're doing a series highlighting some of the men who are participating in American Cancer Society's second annual we Real Men Wear Pink campaign. Up next, Joan Uggen Charfras introduces you to senior sales consultant for AK, Mr. Tom Garcia. Real Men Wear Pink, presented by American Cancer Society and Island Cancer Center. So why does Tom Garcia wear pink? Not only a Chevrolet, big sponsor, also at the same time, I just wanted to help out. After hearing all the stories and then how close he got to my family, it just made me want it to do something. Garcia says he has a cousin that is a breast cancer survivor, and in February of this year, his brother Noli was diagnosed with prostate cancer. It is in their honor that he joins the Real Men Wear Pink campaign this year. Knowing that I know, or the family knows, it kind of brought us up to, wow, is this really happening? And uh, very strong, uh, and I'm glad that he's in good spirits because I, I think of anything that will make him thrive through what he needs to do. Upon hearing the news of his brother's diagnosis, so many questions came to mind. What do you do? Um, uh, what do you say, but most especially, um, uh, how can we assist them? It's more like it, uh, you know, between doing fundraisers and, and uh, most especially um, just comforting them and hoping that we have some type of uh, medicines or uh, things that can, and how we can assist basically as a family. The Real Men Wear Pink campaign is designed to give men a greater role in the fight against breast cancer and use the power of pink. The most excited thing about this is um, bringing awareness, bringing awareness to, to, the, to the community, to the people that are affected. He, along with many others, continue to help fight the good fight with hope that a cure can be found. Real Men Wear Pink, presented by American Cancer Society and Island Cancer Center. 
Sports is next. Keep it here. I didn't plan to be a single mom. No one does. But here I am, mid-30s, divorced with three kids, just trying to make things work. With the rising cost of living on Guam, it gets harder for working families like mine to get by. I've heard some politicians say that the economy is good, but rent is higher, health insurance is too expensive, and our incomes have stayed the same. It's clear that the change they're talking about hasn't been for us, and we deserve better. I'm just so tired of all the empty promises. It's time to fight for a Guam that working families can afford. That's why I'm voting for Lulian Guerrero. Lou is a successful businesswoman who doesn't just talk about creating jobs. She doesn't just talk about housing. She's made it possible for people just like me to buy their first home. So when she says she's going to work to make Guam better, I believe her and I trust her. I'm voting for Lou and I ask all of you who are tired of the way things have been to vote for her too. I'm Lulian Guerrero and I approve this ad. Off a day, Guam. As we head into the final days of the general election, Alicia and I are asking you to be open to the choices in front of you when deciding on who will get your vote to serve Guam in the years ahead. Frank and I have been fighting to build a government that's accountable to everyday people. So vote for a team that's already proven to you that building safer schools and securing our island neighborhoods is our top priority. Alicia and I are one of you. We have lived your struggles and we know what it's like to work long hours at a full-time job, yet still needing two or sometimes three part-time jobs just to put food on the table and put gas in your cars just to get to work. So vote for a team that will put you and your family first. On November 6th, write in Frank Uggen and Alicia Limtiako for, for Governor, Governor and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor. Governor. Thank, Thank you, Sidhu Masi and Marami Salamapo. My name is Frank Blasogun Jr. and I approve this message. How easy is it to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app? Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. Just present the app to any authorized representative to earn your points. Now that was easy. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. Join the thousands who switch to GTA's handset payment option. Now I can get the freshest new phone at any time. My payments are based on my finances. No more contracts for me. It's time to get the phone I want when I want it. With HBO, I get to choose. <laughs> Call or visit GTA today to learn more about HBO, the most customizable phone plan on island, only at GTA. At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We'll take a look at your NFL schedule for Monday in just a bit, but let's start the show off tonight with some 
table tennis news for you. Check it out. Former Olympian table tennis player Michael Hyatt recently held a table tennis exhibition match at the Aganya Shopping Center. Hyatt moved to Guam to help build the interest in the sport and is now working with the Guam Table Tennis Federation full time to groom our local players. He says Guam's location is key being so close to Asian powerhouses in the sport. We're in better shape than, you know, the mainland. We're in better shape than the Latin American region. In Europe, we're right where all the European players that are good, they all go to China and train. So I saw that advantage and I thought um, we, you know, that we could leverage that. Also, we have a lot, lot of wonderful partners and sponsors here locally that have interest in the youth and in helping develop sports like table tennis. And I'm very confident that um, if we keep this program going with the support of the local sponsors that we will produce an Olympian or two that will represent Guam in the 2024 Olympics and also 2028 in LA. The St. Paul Warriors hosted the 2018 ACSC Boys Volleyball Tournament with teams from Malaysia, Philippines, Hong Kong, and Korea participating. Games were held at St. Paul in the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. St. Paul's varsity squad went through pool play and the playoffs undefeated, heading to their home court for the championship match against visiting and defending champions Yongsan International School of Korea. The Warriors ended up taking the tournament title after a five tough set win on their home turf. Irie Fitzgerald will be competing in an ISA World Junior Surfing Championship in California this weekend. This is the second year for Irie representing Guam. If Guam has friends or family near Huntington Beach, please join Team Guam and rally support for the opening ceremonies on October 27th. This year I'll compete with the best junior surfers from over 40 countries and I'll try my best to represent Guam again. For more info, check out isasurf.org slash juniors 2018 or Irie underscore Fitzgerald on Instagram. NFL football schedule for this Monday, 3 in the morning, NFL on CBS, KUAM TV 11. It's going to be the Broncos at the Chiefs. Then at 10.15 in the morning, NBC Sunday Night Football, KUAM TV 8, Saints at the Vikings. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. Every time I travel, there's something from home that I can't leave without. I take my Dokomo Pacific data to go to share my stories in Taiwan, check subway routes in Tokyo, be my food guide in Hong Kong, meet new friends in the Philippines, make updates in the States, find my way around Korea, and check out all the cool shows in Singapore. It's the data I have in all the places I love for only $10 a day. Data to go from Dokomo Pacific, better together. I didn't plan to be a single mom, no one does. But here I am, mid-30s, divorced with three kids, just trying to make things work. With the rising cost of living on Guam, it gets harder for working families like mine to get by. I've heard some politicians say that the economy is good, but rent is higher, health insurance is too expensive, and our incomes have stayed the same. It's clear that the change they are talking about hasn't been for us, and we deserve better. I'm just so tired of all the empty promises. It's time to fight for a Guam that working families can afford. That's why I'm voting for Lulian Guerrero. Lou is a successful businesswoman who doesn't just talk about creating jobs. She doesn't just talk about housing. She's made it possible for people just like me to buy their first home. So when she says she's going to work to make Guam better, I believe her and I trust her. I'm voting for Lou and I ask all of you who are tired of the way things have been to vote for her too. I'm Lulian Guerrero and I approve this ad. 
Check the Connect, Guam's new online source to find local pros and services when you need it the most. Search for services by using keywords or browse through categories and start checking things off your to-do list. Explore listings and find verified professionals on the island for your everyday needs from home to auto, special occasions, and so much more. Create a customer account to rate and save your favorite listings. Get connected today. Visit theconnectguam.com now. Half a day hungry drivers. Are you spending more time on the road? Shell has teamed up with Wendy's so you can buy fuel and eat free. Just fuel up seven gallons at any Shell station and get a coupon for a Wendy's cheeseburger or chicken nuggets. Or use two coupons to redeem a Wendy's cheeseburger meal with fries and a drink. Fuel up at Shell today because this deal won't last long. Quality service, fuel and food from Shell and Wendy's. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Now is the time to buy at Triple J. The best deals of the year and a chance to get some extra cash in our Grab the Dough and Go promotion. Get 30 seconds at our money machine to grab all you can and take the cash or apply to the cost of any new or used vehicle purchase. Plus our best pricing on all Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, Volvos, Kias, and used cars. New cars as low as $137 per paycheck and used cars as low as $85 per paycheck. Visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and get pre-approved instantly. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Here are tonight's October 24th birthday shout-outs. Ronald Pablo, happy, happy birthday, Bedu, miss and love you, Loriana and the kids. Happy birthday number 15 to Caden Rosalind. To our son, have a wonderful day and may all your wishes come true. This comes with love from dad, mom, and all of your brothers. Happy birthday, Auntie Francis Cabrera. This comes from the entire Cabrera Familia. And happy belated birthday wishes to Jacob Ausick. Happy 15th birthday, Jacob. Love Mommy, Daddy, Alfred, and Vance. Remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include your photo, your name, and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Stay safe, Guam. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. KUAM News Headline.